Well, good Monday morning, everyone. Good to see you again. And I know you're ready for another great week because you have gotten up early enough on a Monday morning to watch the show, or you were wise enough to set your recorder for it, and now you're watching it. Either way, I'm so glad that you have joined us, and we have a good, a really good week in store for us all. It's going to make us think a little bit, but we're also going to learn a lot. We're going to look at transformed lives. When Jesus comes into anyone's life, it changes that, he changes that person's life. Without fail, that happens. However, sometimes those changes are dramatic and bigger, and frankly, bigger than, than others, partly because the person had a lot in their life to change. And that is certainly the case on the first person that we're going to look at today. If I were to ask you, who in the New Testament life changed the most once he or she met Jesus. Hmm. I, I wonder who, you, who would you come up with for that? Well, I'm willing to put the person that I have in mind up against anyone that you could come up with because I just think this person's life changed the, the absolute most. Let me tell you about this person. He, it was a guy, he was about as bad as you could be. You know why? He was persecuting and killing Christians. Wow. Killing Christians. Yes. We read about him and we talked about him two weeks ago when we were talking about Stephen. And when Stephen was killed, martyred for his faith, it says in chapter 8 of Acts at verse 1, it says, and Saul was there giving approval to Stephen's death. Saul. And I know you know who Saul, Saul's name got changed to what? Paul. It got changed because everything about his life changed. Paul, as we know him, you know he went on to write much of the New Testament. And he took the gospel, the good news of Jesus, all over the world, the known world. And at that time, but before that time, I should say, he was the worst. Reading on in Acts chapter 8, it says this about Saul. On that day, the day that Stephen died, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. So he not only, Saul was not only at and probably a part of the killing of Stephen. He approved of it for sure. But he went on from there to start to persecute the Christians Far and wide, far and wide. We pick up his life again in Acts chapter 9. And uh, it says, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for a letter to the synagogues in Damascus which was the capital of Syria at the time. Uh, I think it still is, isn't it? Wow, those whole cities, isn't that something? But he was going to go up north to Damascus, and he wanted a letter, and those letters, so that if he found any there who were who belonged to the way, and that was 
the Christians were called as followers of the, the way with a capital W. Whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. So Paul's asking the high priest for a letter that would say, I, I want to search hard and, hard and wide, far, far and wide. And if I find anyone, followers of Christ, up in Damascus, can I have your permission to bring them back to Jerusalem because they had scattered? Do I have your permission to bring them back so that what? I can put them into prison. Oh, this person had an anger and a hate for followers of Christ. We would call Christians. For him to change after being a participant in all of that and a leader in the persecution of Christians, for his life to change, something dramatically was going to have to happen. And it does. The next verse. As he neared Damascus on his journey, so evidently he got that letter, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. He replied, now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Jesus appeared to Saul on the Damascus on the road to Damascus and his life was transformed immediately. He says in verse 15 uh Ananias is who Saul went to see go this man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel, I'll show him how much he must suffer for my name. Jesus was so now involved, and he was picking Saul, and now to be known as Paul, to be his instrument to the Gentiles. He knew that this encounter with Saul would change and transform his life, and Paul did changed completely it's really an interesting story i encourage you to read through acts chapter 9 and naturally of course the christians weren't really excited for quite a while to invite paul into their fellowship because he thought he was like they were getting tricked and he would turn them in and take them to prison at the best if not worse but they did eventually, and the Holy Spirit worked through, in and through Paul, and he was a different person. And of course, eventually, I know you know a lot of the story, if not all the story, about Paul. And he ends up in a Roman prison for his faith, for because he refused, at that point, he had planted churches all over Europe, and he now was willing to die for his faith. He would not deny the name of Jesus at all to the point of prison and death for him, a completely different person. Jesus always makes a difference in a person's life. And Paul had encountered him face to face he got to see him, and we have the privilege of reading about that. And I know that Jesus has changed my life, and I'm, I pray that he has changed yours. Allow him to do so. Well, we're going to talk about another completely changed life tomorrow. Don't miss it. I'll see you tomorrow. And I won't worry about tomorrow.